Okay, we're ready to start. Please turn off or silence all cell phones and electronic devices. And would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge of the flag. Benelli? Here. Paduke? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulisek? Here. Luhan? Here. Menuda? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Riskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Staganga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tortell? Here. Tui? Here. Bureau? Here. Brescia? Here. 21 present. Okay, we have one recognition award. I'd like to invite up to the podium uh, Legislator Paul Ruskevich, his father, Mr. John Ruskevich, and Mr. Bill Grahowski. Uh, proclamation recognizing the contribution of William Grahowski to the Drowned Lands Historical Society and Black Dirt Region. Fine. While they're walking up, I'll just congratulate Bill on behalf of the legislature for your hard work, and Paul's going to get into detail. And, and John is your father, correct, Paul? Yes. Was he a general or a colonel, I heard? Or? Lieutenant Colonel. Lieutenant Colonel, so. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like, like, like Jim O'Donnell, that's right. So. Okay, Paul, take it away. We have the proclamation. Um, I thought it was up. Proclamation. Okay, yeah, um, yeah basically, I uh, just want to congratulate you, Bill. Uh, basically, this proclamation uh, recognizes uh, Bill's efforts with the Drownlands Historical Society. Uh, you were one of the founding members back when it was an ad hoc right. group. Uh, back what year? Uh, beginning in 1970. 1970. Um, and now you're the uh, vice chairman of the Board of Trustees of the organization, which now is chartered. And uh, you were born and raised here in the Black Dirt. You've lived through the... Uh, the uh, events of the jet port and the uh, fire. fire. It's all in here, so I'm going to read it. <laughs> I don't usually read these, but they're, uh, this, this one's uh, pretty brief. So, uh, Resolution of the Legislature of the County of Orange recognizing the contributions of William Grahusky to the Drowned Lands Historical Society and Black Dirt Region. Whereas it is fitting and appropriate to recognize the contributions of an outstanding citizen and whereas William Bilger Husky was one of the three founding members of the Drowned Lands Historical Society. Formed in the early 1970s on an ad hoc basis, the society collected archives and artifacts related to farming in the Black Dirt region. A descendant of Polish immigrants and a lifetime resident of the area, Bill lived through the furor surrounding the proposal to construct a jet port in the Black Dirt in the late 1950s and early 1960s the devastating Black Dirt Fire of 1964, and other events relating to farming these drowned lands. Bill is the Vice President of the Board of Trustees of the now chartered Drowned Lands Historical Society, and whereas William Grahusky's service to the County of Orange is most deeply appreciated. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved that we, the Orange County Legislature, do hereby formally recognize the contributions and service of William Grahusky and preserving Orange County's history in the Black Dirt region and recognizes him as the official Black Dirt historian, given, given the second day of July, 2018. Thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you, uh, legislators. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that many of the uh, legislators here know that the Black Dirt isn't restricted to those uh, four towns in the, in the uh, main valley. Warwick, Goshen, way beyond the Minnesink, it extends to Greenville, Chester, 
uh, city of Middletown, the town of Wallkill. There's also uh, uh, pockets of black dirt in the county uh, in Montgomery and uh, uh, down in uh, Central Valley, and probably one or two that I've missed smaller. So virtually all of you legislators have something real close to you in black dirt history that we'd like to uh, uh, record and, and keep for future generations. So thank you again. I was supposed to say something, but I don't know what I'm going to say. Uh, Bill talked about the artifacts and the archives. Uh, they were gathered over the years by the late Francis Sodrick, uh, one of the other two uh, founding members of our organization. And uh, when she passed on, or before, she, before that, she built the museum in her home. She added onto her home, and she did a lot of things with school kids and so forth, which was quite gratifying. And uh, then when she passed on, her son Bobby, who now lives in California, emptied her home and put all of these archives and artifacts in an old Jesse Van Sickle's dairy barn on Van Sickle Hill, which is Black Walnut Island. And then there was a suspicious fire in the neighborhood and Bobby panicked, he says, John, this is valuable stuff, we've got to get it someplace. How about your barn? So guess what? I now have half a barn full of artifacts and I've got 26 file drawers of archives and they're not cataloged. So anyone interested in something to do with the black dirt, if you have a question, give me a call and you can come on over and help me thumb through these files to find what you're interested in. Enough said. Thank you. I also want to recognize that our county historian, uh, Johanna Yon, is here uh, for the event. So, Johanna, thank you for being here. And uh, congratulations again. Okay, thank you. Johanna, Jim O'Donnell mentioned maybe we could try getting an intern for those gentlemen to help with those archives. I've been interned Yeah, if you have one, perfect. He moves fast. Okay, uh, public participation. We have a few signed up. First speaker is Sandra Kassam regarding Ag District Number Three. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sandra Kassam from the town of Newburgh. Thank you. Applicant Harry Service, if granted an agricultural district for the 98 wooded acres, would be able to use the land in almost any way he wanted. His selected timber cut could legally become clear cutting without a stormwater pollution prevention plan.
He could keep livestock, as he has already done, excavate or fill, plow and till, with no town permits or DEC studies. He could build any type of farm structure without regard to town height or other regulations, and could also spray pesticides and herbicides. Past actions show that he will unlikely be monitored in any systematic way, and he could even set aside some space for a junkyard. Furthermore, if he wished, he could build homes at density to one acre per residence. Now it's two. Again, no need for an environmental impact study or a SWIP. The precedent set by approving this application is very serious, and we should concern all our legislators, it should concern all of you, because it cancels and weakens local town regulations and zoning laws and sets an unfortunate precedent. This is fine. All of this would be acceptable if we are considering a bona fide farm operation. But service doesn't have a history of farming. He could give farming a bad name. Further, he could and has parked vehicles anywhere on his property, including near neighboring homes. Consider his haphazard use of the previous 40 plus acres allowed into the district as per Cheryl Mayen's testimony, which you may have received. Previous actions usually predict future ones. Drainage from this 98 acre ridge property would affect all the surrounding homes and also the Quasaya Creek below to the east, a tributary to the Hudson. I have two photos here I'll give you in a moment. To summarize, the ag designation cancels all town regulations. Also important to all residents and officials, the ag designation lays the groundwork for requesting a property tax reduction with only farm income guidelines of $10,000 annually. Finally, but also and most important, why is Mr. Ronald Hughes always representing owner Harry Service before the Ag Board, how can this be legal? What document gives him this privilege? Thank you, Kendra Senator Kassan. Okay, next speaker, Christina Norgard, regarding the same issue, agenda item number three. Hello, I'm Christina Norgard from Foxwood Drive in Newburgh. I've only just learned about um, what may be happening. And, um, I'm deeply concerned about the future plans for the 98 acres directly bordering our neighborhood on Foxwood. This land is surrounded by residential areas all around. And we fear that our health and property values are seriously at stake, considering the inevitable, inevitable noise, wastewater runoff, flooding, pesticides, etc., that would result from um, agricultural development. We're already contending with an increase in commercial and residential development, traffic pollution, lack of a public wastewater sewer system, and the proximity and resulting environmental problems <clears throat> of Stewart Airport and New York State Thruway. The remaining natural land and wildlife ought to be preserved to the extent possible by strictly limiting any additional development. I strongly oppose the agricultural designation and we also request that a full disclosure of details pertaining to the plan is made available to all the residents. Thank you. Okay, next speaker, Robert Parker, regarding agenda item number three. Good afternoon. In regard to the property that abuts the back part of where I live on Floral Drive, my name is Robert Parker. I live at 22 Floral Drive in the town of Newburgh. Before I get down to my little list, I just want to say that uh, Ms. Sam brought up the past history. I'm not aware of some of his past history. I'm aware of some of the current history that's going on. On the planning board meeting in the town of Newburgh, we were uh, assured by the representative from the uh, forestry company that uh, cutting wouldn't start until after eight, or I think maybe nine o'clock. Uh, I'm witness to the fact that it starts previous to 0700. 
Also, they're already clearing trees because I can hear them falling. Now, getting down to my list for a moment, um, I don't understand, we brought this up at the planning board meeting also, is how do you harvest trees without clear cutting? You can't get to these trees unless you knock down trees, and other trees will be knocked down when you knock down your prescribed diameter trees. So that, I'm lost as to how they can do that. There was a concession by the representative of the forest company in speaking for Mr. Service that there would be a 50-foot buffer zone between where they would cut trees and the territorial boundaries of the residential areas. That had a little shaky stuff in it, too, because he said, well, if there's trees in there that he wants, then he can ignore the buffer zone. And I'm going to get down to my other point about that in a moment, uh, other than the wildlife that's now the coyotes that are coming into our yards, the bear that has come in and destroyed the uh, bird feeders, etc. But what I'm getting down to is, if this is approved, what exactly can he put on that property? If it's, a, I don't understand. If it's approved agricultural, why would there be houses? Why would it be a housing development? Does he have to serve notice of what his ultimate purpose for the use of this land is? I don't know. You have the legislators. The other thing that I want to know is, since there's, it started as a uh, harvesting permit, and now it seems to be going into the agricultural, who is going to monitor this operation? Nobody seems to know who's going to oversee what trees are cut. There was an agreement there would be 1,170 some odd trees to be cut of various species, mostly hardwood, I believe from the smallest diameter of 14 inches and up to, I think, 30 inches. That's irrelevant. But who is going to oversee this? Is the onus fall upon the, the issuing of this agricultural thing to you folks? Does it fall back to the town? Does it call, fall back to the town of Newburgh police? Who we've understood, that's who gets notified when these saws start previous to the uh, agreed time limit. I don't know how much time you'll give me. I'm pretty well wrapped up here. But uh, if you have any answers, I'd be happy to hear them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Bernard Cerrone, regarding agenda item number three. I'm Bernard Cerrone and I live on Foxwood Drive. I've been there for 43 years. And I have been a protector of Chadwick's Lake, which our drinking water comes from. And being that this is right south of Chadwick's Lake and water drainage goes down in that direction, I'm fearful of any damage to my drinking supplies. And that is my protest. And I hope that everyone's listening because it's a very serious problem having good drinking water in this country. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Judith Lobig, agenda item number three. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm Judith Lobig. I'm on Union Avenue, and my property is across the street from the 98 acres. I've spoken with you before. I have emailed all of you with a rather lengthy because our time here is limited. I just want to reiterate, we are a residential neighborhood. We don't object to farming. We just did not want to live next to farms, which is why we bought in residential areas. We don't know what's going to happen. And if this property does go into the agricultural district, things that may be promised now, like stormwater protection, et cetera, does not mean it's going to happen. And I am very leery. I also have well water, and I am directly downhill and across from this property, and I am concerned about my drinking water. Anyway, I am just please imploring all of you to give this serious, serious thought, because we want our neighborhood to be our neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you. Final speaker before the agenda, Animal Hughes. Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Chairman. 
I'd like to recap what all the comments had to say this evening, which we've been through at least three or four times already. Your group, the Ag Board, the County Planning Department, the Town Planning Board, the DEC. I think everybody but the Pope has a, had a little bit of a blessing on this thing already. And I'd like to qualify and show where some things stop and others start. First of all, I'll qualify the entire project with this. I am Harry Service's brother-in-law. His children are my nieces and nephews. That's where I'm in in this picture. And all along, some of the members that have spoken before me have been looking for our mortgage papers and looking for our agreements. That has nothing to do with what we're here for today. So I'll try to make this simple, and I'd like to have a little bit of an extended time if necessary, because we may not be able to misspell all of the rumors and mistruths that have been told again and again and again. First of all, the Chadwick Lake Reservoir is not in question here. We're 2,000 feet south of the Chadwick Lake on our first 40-acre parent parcel. The water does not run uphill, but if Mrs. Kassam can show me where it does, I'd be glad to be her ticket agent, because I don't know of any place on Earth that water runs uphill. Mrs. Lobig and Mrs. Kassam and I met for over an hour. We discussed all facets and all details about this. The back of the property doesn't drain into Quisay Creek. It goes across the street. We have no swift or swip problems with water because there's a swamp on the very westerly portion of the 90 acres. It's probably six acres or so. Our logging permits are in order and the DEC regulates that. Our application for our permits to be entered into the Ag District went through the Farm Bureau, went through the County Planning, and everybody that had a piece of this. This has all been blessed. What we have in front of us here by these people coming back again and again to questions that have been answered and addressed is just a filibuster to try to wear you down to change your mind that the boogeyman's in the closet here and we're going to, who knows what they think. I've heard rumors that we're building houses. We are not building houses. We built a house there for my nephew to live in. One house, 138 acres. There's no storm water problems. One of the previous speakers said that once it's in the Ag District, there goes the town and their participation and in inspection. Heights can be overlooked. Permits don't need to be so. Well, I would guess that these people that spoke before me need to read the excerpts of the law. We're not exempt from anything by becoming in the Ag District. And then another speaker brings up the fact that we're just looking to get in there to chisel the tax down. This is not so. We haven't applied for a farm exemption. So it's been quite clear that these people that continue to persist to bring up the same things again and again don't know the difference between an AR district and an Ag District and a logging permit and a clearing permit. And will please con conclude. Well, I, I, I would like to close this up once and for all. Can I have a few more seconds? That's really about five okay, seconds. Okay, so then take a good look at the maps that I distributed and draw your own conclusions. Everything is upside down and backwards here, especially the water flows. Okay, th that concludes the public portion and before the agenda. Um, I'll recognize Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there are no objections, that'll be done. Are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Apparently not. Okay, so items 1 through 14 will be voted on individually, 15 through 17 collectively, and 18 through 21, correct? We need a second, a motion on that? We don't need a motion. Okay. All right, we'll start. Uh, a is referred to all legislators. B, receive and file, and C, or AKA, A1, receive and file. Okay, agenda item number one. Legislators Benelli and Kulisek, resolution appointing Louise B. Vandemark, a commissioner of elections, pursuant to sections 3-200 and 3-204 of the election law and act number three of 1936 of the former Orange County Board of Supervisors. Second. Discussion? Yes. Want to be added to tell? Added. Kevin Darian added. 
Joel's, Joel's added. Tom Fagione added. Amo added. Benelli added. You want to speak? Okay. Paduk added. Add me to that too, as well, please. Um, Nagnostakis, O'Donnell. Is there anybody that doesn't want to be added? Add everybody. <laughs> Make it easy. <laughs> okay. Okay, Katie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just wanted to add a few remarks. I've had the opportunity to work with Louise for a number of years since she became the Deputy Commissioner of Elections. And I have to say, she is the utmost professional. She is very, very helpful to all candidates, all elected officials, all party chairs that go in for all types of assistance and drive the people at Board of Elections crazy. So she's, she does it with a lot of patience and a lot of class, and it's proud. And I'm very proud to sponsor this resolution. Okay. Yes, Legislator Nangostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, likewise, I'd like to uh, welcome Louise uh, to the position. I've dealt with her a few times. She's a very nice individual, very confident individual. She's going to do a great job. I want to take a moment and also uh, thank Sue Barron for her work um, at the Board of Elections. Um, I don't know, 20 years? Is that how long it was? 29. 29. Um, yeah, I wasn't even close. But, but thank you for everything you've done. Um, you were very partisan, but that, that was your job to be partisan. You helped make sure that democracy worked. There's a two-party system, and you had to fight for your party sometimes. And uh, without your efforts, we wouldn't have democracy in Orange County. So thank you very much, Sue. Legislator O'Donnell. I yeah, just want to congratulate, congratulate Louise. She'll be great if she's half as good as uh, Sue's been for 29 years. Uh, she'll do a great job for us. Sue is uh, going to have much more time. She does a lot of charity work. I see her at the uh, uh, Safe Homes charity events, bowling. So enjoy your retirement, Sue, and I'll, I'll see you at the bowling alley. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> yes, uh, Legislator Totel. Yes, I want to start out by thanking Sue. Um, she's helped me quite a bit throughout the years, uh, learned the, the ways of election law and, and how to process everything. And both her and Louise have been consummate professionals. Uh, I've seen them help people no matter what party you represent and be there and always be fair and honest. And, and thank you for your time, your dedication to us. And, and I look forward to working with Louise and, and uh, her new deputy. Minority Leader Paduk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sue, I'd like to congratulate you on all, I've been here for 21 years and you've been a help to me every single year with the help of Louise. Uh, I think she's very confident in taking over for you. I'm sure you've shown her the, the way to go and I think we'll have a very good commitment to the Democrats and everyone actually who's involved with, with elections. So thank you for your service and congratulations, Louise. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, Kevin Daring, did you want to say a couple words? Uh, this first, I want to begin by thanking Commissioner Sue Barron. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, as, as a person who just started off in getting, you know, learning the process, you're the kind of person who goes and really takes people on your wing. You, you, you show them what they need to do. And I think that that's exactly what you need. There are so many people who are trying to learn about the process, um, who are just getting into this, and, and we need people who are going to do that. And so I want to thank you for, for, for being so dedicated for your, all your hard work for over 29 years. Um, I also want to say thank you to, to Louise and, um, and, and congratulate both of them. And I'm very excited to be able to work with Louise and Bianca. Um, it's very exciting times. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Sierra. Uh, Susie, thank you. It's been 15 years. Uh, <laughs> it's been 15 years since we met. Uh, you've helped me out with every campaign, every year with petitions. Um, you did your job with class and very uh, professional. So thank you, and I wish you well in your retirement. Um, Louise, she's not here tonight, but I want to wish her well in her uh, new endeavors. Um, I think you, you guys will make an excellent team over there. And, uh, Elections. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Legislator Bureau. 
Uh, first of all, congratulations to Louise and congratulations to Sue. I've known Sue since she was about 10 years old up on Oakland Avenue. And not just being the uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner of the Board of Elections, but she served time as the mayor for the village of Chester. She's been the uh, president of the Chester Kiwanis Club and will be again soon. So she spent a lot of time donating her time to the community, and we appreciate that. And uh, good luck in your presidency and the uh, Kiwanis coming up. Thanks. I too would like to wish Sue all the best in her future endeavors. It's been a long time working here. Always uh, got her facts straight and presented very well at committee, and uh, she'll be missed. And I and I. Wish Louise all the best of luck. I don't think we're going to miss too much of a beat there. I mean, she's uh, well respected. She's endorsed by the Orange County Democratic Committee. Courtney's here endorsing her. Um, I don't know who's at the Board of Elections today. Seems like everybody's here. <laughs> there's a few Louis, there's a few you got it covered. You probably had air over there too, right? Yes. <laughs> and Louise is here, the old, good old faithful Louise. Uh, always helped me with the labels. Good lady, and she's finally retired. Finally, the final time, right, yes. Louise? Oh, Carol. Carol. Carol, I'm sorry, Carol. <laughs> Carol, I meant to say yeah, Carol. Yeah, finally retired. Finally retired. And Bianca's here too, Mike's daughter, Bianca, who works over there. But always very helpful, and uh, um, I fully endorse Louise. I think she's going to do a great job, and uh, roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number two. Thank you. Yes, you absolutely said a few words. Come to the podium. No, Come no, to the podium. No. I just want to take an, um, a moment to introduce uh, Louise's deputy, for those that you don't know. Uh, this is Bianca Paduk Staltari, and Bianca it will be the deputy as soon as we go downstairs and sign the papers with Kelly. <laughs> so we're good to go. And Louise was sorry that she couldn't be here because um, we got the dates we got the dates mixed up, and she's still away on her only vacation that she'll get this year. But <laughs> we appreciate the fact that everybody spoke so highly of her. And this is her family here. Don't mind her. <laughs> this don't you mind want to introduce the family? Uh, yes, this is her daughter, <laughs> Stephanie, hello. her granddaughter, Michaela, and her grandson, hi. Jacob. Say hello. So, Welcome to the board, you guys. <laughs> so thank you, very, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak, and thank you for all the kind words you've said. And now thank we you. are on to help. And Eileen Hand is here too. She's a friend of John Vero's and mine, and she said, and she told us if we didn't vote for Louise, we're going to get this. There you go. There you go. She does shake the piss point a bit. I'll tell you that. Oh, to you, Steve. She's our race horse. Right? She's the race horse. <laughs> She's the artillery, right? <laughs> okay. What are we on? Two or three? Thank two. You. Number two. Legislators cheating bureau. Let me just thank David Green too. He didn't make it today, but David. Oh, there he is. I didn't see you, David. You're hiding. That's why. That's right. Thanks, David. <laughs> Legislators Cheney and Bureau. Resolution amending Article 2, Section E 1B of the Legislative Manual of the Orange County Legislature regarding the circulation of agendas for all meetings as previously amended, pursuant to County Law Section 153 and Orange County Charter Section 2.02A. Uh, discussion? Fagione? Roll added. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Adu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number three. Legislators Fagione, Menuda, Cheney, and Benelli. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the inclusion of certain real property in Orange County Agricultural District Number 1, pursuant to New York State Agriculture and Markets Law, Section 303B. Second. Discussion? Yes. Legislator Ruskevich. Uh, yeah, I just want to um, uh, say a few words, try to clear up some of the confusion about ag districts. Um, first of all, uh, by including land in the Ag District, it has absolutely no effect on local zoning or permits or anything like that. 
uh, does not make the property exempt from uh, any kind of uh, building code requirements, um, anything like that. And it also has nothing to do with uh, any tax exemptions. In order to get the uh, agricultural tax exemption, you have to um, uh, prove that you're uh, generating at least $10,000 in income from an agricultural operation on that. And um, you can do that and qualify for that uh, whether you're, or not you're in the Ag District. And as far as uh, you know, any plans for starting a farm operation, uh, it goes the same. Um, you can uh, move ahead with those plans whether or not you are in the Ag District. And again, it doesn't exempt you from any kind of uh, uh, building codes or zoning laws, anything like that, or logging permits. Um, I think a lot of the concerns that uh, we heard today uh, have to deal with uh, local zoning and, um, and uh, town permits. Uh, the only thing that the, uh, the Ag District inclusion uh, does do is uh, give certain protections under the New York State's um, right to farm law. And as long as agricultural operations are operating according to uh, good agricultural practices, which are determined by the Department of Ag and Markets, um, then that gives the uh, operator certain protections uh, from frivolous lawsuits, uh, stuff like that. So um, I think a lot of the concerns we've heard today uh, should probably be directed uh, either to the town or to uh, DEC. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, Legislator Nangostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, before us, we have, an well, we have a resolution uh, to include one, two, three, four, five different parcels of land into an ag district. Um, now, there's a place for everything. There's a proper place for a power plant to be sited, and there are proper places for pipelines to be sited, and there are proper places for farms to be sited. And there are places that are not proper for those things. Uh, in all the years that I've been here, um, we've probably had dozens certainly a couple of dozen um, pieces of land included in ag districts. Um, and I have never remember seeing anyone from the community coming out in opposition of inclusion, inclusion of that particular district. As a matter of fact, as I said, we have five before us today. The other four parcels don't have anyone here objecting. Um, this particular parcel, listen, the person that made the application they probably did everything correct. They probably have every right in the world to do what they're doing. They probably went before every board that they needed to go before. They probably got every approval from that board and departments that they went before. But we have people that live on particular streets that are adjacent to this land. Uh, by my count, 53 different homes on Foxwood Drive, on Foxwood Drive South, on Union Avenue, on Floral Street, and on Garden Street and certainly within a mile radius, probably three or four times as many as those 53 homes that are adjacent to the land. And we have people coming out saying, I object. I don't want a farm here. So again, the person with the application probably did everything correct and got all his approvals. But those individuals, their last resort is not those boards. They don't go before those boards. Their last resort is their elected officials. And they're coming before us asking us not to cite this particular property in their neighborhood as an ag district property. I am going to side with the homeowners in this case. I'm going to side with the people that are coming before me asking for relief from me. And I am going to vote against this and urge all my colleagues to do the same thing. Thank you. OK, go to Senator Benton. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Nagasakis, I think since you've been here, we've probably done, included hundreds of properties, I would think, uh, in, in ag districts. And I have to say, Mr. Ruskev said it very well. Uh, basically, inclusion, inclusion in an ag zone really is basically just gives you uh, protections under the Right to Farm Act. Um, I don't know, what, what a couple years ago, the original 40-acre property, I voted against strictly because a councilwoman from the town of Newburgh who lives in the neighborhood said she was opposed to it, so I voted no. This time, this time uh, the town is neutral. 
So um, again, Mr. Muscovich, I think you said it very well. Uh, basically, they're just getting agricultural protections from frivolous lawsuits and, and other things that are possible, and they do have to comply with all local zoning. So I will be supporting it today. Okay, roll call. You want to separate the um, that one resolution? Okay. Okay, we'll separate the uh, service property. If there are no objections, we'll separate with the service property. Okay. That's basically it. Otherwise, we can go through each, you know. It'll expedite it. Okay, so first we'll vote on the service property if there are no objections. Okay, which, uh, which number is it? is to include and no is not to include. Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? No. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulasek? No. Luhan? Yes. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Sierra? Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, I'm sorry, Tortell. Tortell is a no. Tui, Bureau, Russia. 17 ayes, four noes. Okay, now the remaining properties roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Number four. Legislators Ruskevich, Benton, Sassi, O'Donnell, Cheney, Totel, Lujan, Minuta, Fagione. Resolution of the Legislature of the County of Orange recognizing the contributions of William Grohoski to the Drowned Lands Historical Society in Black Dirt Region. Senator. Okay, all Republicans, Majority Leader? Yes, please. Okay. And uh, Lujan, Emma, as well? Okay, and cool aside. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number five. Legislator Sassy and Luhan. Resolution providing for a public hearing upon the tentative budget for Orange County Community College for the fiscal year beginning September 1st, 2018, pursuant to section 6304 of the educational education law. The public hearing would be August 2nd, 2018 at 315. Discussion? Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Adu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number six. Legislators Tortell and Benelli, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Office for the Aging to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office for the Aging pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Oh, 
Of the two we added. Okay. Yes, Sutherland added, and Fagione added, Mr. Ganga added, and Lujan added. Roll call. And Kulisek added. Roll call. Pinelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan, yes. Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number seven, bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators in Agnostakis, Tortel, Benton, O'Donnell. Bond resolution dated July 2nd, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the continued expansion of the Orange County Veterans Memorial Cemetery stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 150,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 150,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Okay, all Republicans, Majority Leader? Okay, all Democrats, or Paduk added, Lujan added, Sierra added, all Dems, okay, and Amo too, everybody. Well, I'm sorry. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, <laughs> Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. And number eight. Legislators Wiscavich and Benton, resolution in support of an application to New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Climate Smart Communities Grant Program by the Orange County Department of Public Works to rehabilitate the Cromline Creek Pump Station. Second. Discussion? Tautel added, Bureau added, Staganga added, Lujan added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number nine. Legislators Benton and Benelli, resolution authorizing the County of Orange to participate in the New York State Department of State 2016-2017 Local Government Efficiency Grant Application for the Orange County Water Efficient Fleet Wash Project and supporting the joint application by the County of Orange, the Town of Goshen, the Village of Goshen, and other municipalities for the purpose of seeking funding for the installation of a shared water efficient fleet wash at the Orange County DPW complex. Second. Discussion, o O'Donnell added, Bureau added, uh, Minuta added, Lujan added, Ruskevich, Staganga, Tautel, roll call. Senator Benton wants to speak. Yes, I just want to quickly say this has uh, been waited, waiting for a long time for this. Ditto that, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 10 is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Vero, Benton, Benelli, and Kulisek. Bond resolution dated July 2nd, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the Orange County Airport water connection to the Town of Montgomery water system. <laughs> stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 2,400,000, appropriating said amount therefore, including the appropriation of 1,500,000 in grant funds received or expected to be received from the state of New York, and authorizing the issuance of 900,000 bonds of the county to finance the balance of said appropriation. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Sheen. Thank you, Chairman. Let me start by saying that uh, both this and the following resolution provide much needed improvements to the airport that will provide opportunity for growth and will strengthen it financially. And I encourage my fellow legislators to vote affirmatively. The committee meetings considering both these resolutions had considerable discussion. Concerns were raised that the intermunicipal agreements were not concluded and available for review. The county will pay for the construction of water and sewer mains that would become the property of the municipality 
and have the ability to serve other properties. Usually when a utility pipe is extended, the cost is borne by all the property owners who would benefit by being along its route. In this case, those owners do not have a current need for the services, but in the future could benefit from the availability of the line located along the property's frontage. In negotiating the intermunicipal agreements with the, towns, with the town and village of Montgomery, I would ask that strong consideration be given to include a provision whereby if a property owner adjoining the line and requesting service in the future be required by the municipality to make a payment to the county to in some part compensate the county for the investment it is making. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Tui. You're added, okay. Peter Tui, Janice added to. Janice, other one. Steganga, uh, Sierra, Minuta, Lujan. And uh, Quetzal Rivera wants to say a few words. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Duke added. Also, for that information, uh, the airport has been sitting on a point where they can really take off in the future. The availability of the water and sewer services is key to that. We've saw we've seen that at other airports where they were lagging, and as soon as they obtain the services they need to bring in other development, whether it be hangars or. Uh, uh, just planes that want to store there, and private development as well, water and sewer are key to this. So this uh, resolution, obviously if we don't get the million and a half dollars from the state, we're not going to pursue this. Uh, so it's pending upon the uh, receipt of the million and a half, and also the uh, money for the next one for the uh, sewer as well. So I encourage all legislators to go forward with this. The development of the airport, uh, it's been revenue neutral right now, actually we may be making some money. So we're looking towards a future where we position ourselves where the airport can really take off, but it does need a little investment at this point. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Do you want to, okay, what's our, our minority leader, Paduk? Yeah, I just wanted to. My mic on, okay. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Cheney from Physical Services. There were a lot of discussions regarding the uh, route that the waterline was going to take. Uh, there was a shorter route, which uh, we had no actual written document stating that it would be uh, not feasible to go that route. However, we've been forwarded some information regarding that. Regarding that, uh, I also brought up that all the people who own those properties when this water runs past it are going to benefit greatly. Why would they say they need it now if you can put 50 more houses on it when you have water. Uh, that's a big concern. I'm glad you asked the town to consider uh, making a payment back to the county for it. And I am sure, right, that if we don't get the 1.5 million, we're not moving forward. And, and I hope that's correct, right? Thank you. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yep. Annette Nostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 11, another bond resolution. Legislators Kulasek, Vero, Benton, Hines, and Agnostakis. Bond resolution dated July 2nd, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the Orange County Airport sewer connection to the village of Montgomery sewer system. Stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 600,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 600,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Discussion? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Oops. Other one you want to be added, or you, a other one added? Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? <laughs> Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21. Oh, uh, abstain on me. Okay. Number 12. That was 20 eyes, one abstention. Legislators Benton and Sutherland. Resolution declaring the Orange County Legislature lead agency for the unlisted action of declaring certain properties in the town of Deer Park surplus. 
issuing a negative declaration in relation thereto and authorizing the sale thereof. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Fagion? Added? Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Pulisic, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Benton and Paduke, resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain deed sale parcel to the previous owner of record, pursuant to section five, paragraph B1 of local law number two of 2010. Second. Discussion? Yes, legislator. Amo added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislators Benton and Menuda. Resolution approving the release of the county's interest in and to a certain deed sale parcel to the previous owner of record, pursuant to section five, paragraph B1 of local law number two of 2010. <coughs> Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, 15 through 17 collectively. Yeah, roll call, I'm sorry. Want to be added to all three or one? Seven, uh, 15, Paduk added to 15, Luhan added to all three. Okay, Totel added to, I, can, I can't hear you. Okay, you want to be added to the one you're not on. Okay, fine. Yes, Sutherland, all three please. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 18. Legislators Fagione, Staganga, and Agnostakos, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tui, Sierra, and Totel. Resolution confirming the appointment of Dr. Irina Gelman as Commissioner of the Department of Health for Orange County by the County Executive, pursuant to Section 7.02 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Okay, major, well, Majority Leader already added all Republicans. She, okay. Okay, any others? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, she's not here to give a round of applause to, but we welcome her aboard, I guess. <laughs> okay, number 19. Legislators Tortell, Stegang, and Sutherland. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish alcohol clinic director and create account clerk and senior clerk part-time at the Orange County Department of Mental Health pursuant to section 2.02I of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Three, two is added. Okay, roll, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vera, Obrescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 20. Legislator Staganga and Menuda. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. 
Discussion? Yes, Luhan added. Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Padu? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Manuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 21. Legislators Sassi, Staganga, and Fagione. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create one senior assistant district attorney at the Orange County District Attorney's Office, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Padoop? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Pulisek? Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we have three speakers uh, for after. Um, first up, Michael Sussman regarding immigration. Good afternoon. Thank you for the pleasure of speaking with you today. There are times when uh, our, our collective history tells us that we cannot be silent, we cannot go along with what is, and we must, as responsible legislators and leaders, take positions. This is one of those times. I've listened to your agenda, and quite frankly, there's not an item on your agenda that equals in importance, nor all of them put together, the matter is not discussed. This legislation should pass a resolution immediately which condemns family separation. We're not in Nazi Germany. We're not in a nation that, that does this to individuals. And each of you as elected officials, in my view, has a responsibility not to be silent. That resolution should request immediate family reunification, not reunification done on some timeline which traumatizes those involved further. That resolution should state that the County of Orange will not be complicit with family separation, will not allow our large county jail to take individuals who are suffering through and from that policy, and should make clear that this is an entirely bipartisan issue of conscience to all Americans. This is not back in the time of internment during the war with Japanese Americans. It's not the time when America slept while six million died. It's a time when people across party lines, across religious lines, across national origin lines, across every line, should be standing up and speaking out. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Rhoda Mack. Rodemack, Monroe, New York. About a year ago, I met with the sheriff of uh, Orange County and asked what the plans were as far as uh, in policy about um, making sweeps of immigrant communities um, to search for proper paper documentation. And um, I was assured that Orange County had no plans to make any such sweeps, recognizing that um, it could decimate a black dirt farmer's livelihoods. Uh, and there were just no plans in place. However, there was a caveat at the end of that. And that was, there are no plans because there's no money yet. So I'm coming here to ask you, Look carefully at that money that comes to you as a county to fill your jails with undocumented immigrants. Look carefully at the money. Consider the moral hazard. The next speaker, Dorothy Winter, regarding same issue. Is 
Dorothy here? Um, she had to leave. And uh, no, you don't. We don't defer time to somebody else. I'm sorry, Pramila. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor?